I'm Olive Soap, your beauty hope, and luster cream shampoo for soft, glamorous dream girl hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks teaches English at Madison High School. She's very fond of her pupils, and they're very fond of her. She's also very fond of biology teacher Philip Boynton, and he's very fond of his frogs and guinea pigs. This absorption in his laboratory is largely due to Mr. Boynton's natural shyness. Well, that is to say that <laughs> he's shy in the world of reality, but in the dreams of our Miss Brooks, Philip Boynton is every bit as ardent and attentive as any woman could desire. Let's listen. Oh, my darling Constance. You're so lovely, so desirable. I feel I could fly on the wings of our love. Won't you join me, Constance, on a flight to paradise? Contact. <laughs> uh, I, I must pause for a moment, my darling. You know why? The station identification. <laughs> <laughs> I want to look at you again before I kiss you. And if you notice anything strange in my eyes, dearest... It's stardust. Well, sweep it under your lids and let's get going. <laughs> oh, isn't it wonderful, Connie? Just you and I alone in our dream house. Yes, it is, Philip. And if anyone comes calling, we'll refuse to answer the doorbell. Sorry, wrong number. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, alarm clock. Oh, you win. Quiet. I could have slept a few more minutes. That dream might have gotten the Academy Award. <laughs> Come in. Good morning, Connie. Good morning, Mrs. Davis. I've brought you a little breakfast tray. Hope you like the surprise recipe on it. Another surprise recipe? I'm still trying to get used to the last one. <laughs> Rye crisp boiled in breadcrumbs. <laughs> Oh, this isn't anything like that, Connie. This is a famous Alaskan dish. Want to know what it consists of? No, what? It's very simple. You just take a pound of frozen whale meat, thaw it out, <laughs> roll into patties, and fry in deep seal fat. Oh, no. What do you call this Eskimo's delight? Blubber burger. <laughs> Blubber burger? Yes, of course, not everyone can enjoy them at first eating. How do you stand on the whale meat, Connie? I really don't know, Mrs. Davis. I've never stood on any. <laughs> it was nice of you to bring a tray into my room, Mrs. Davis, but I'd rather have breakfast out here in the dinette with you. Oh, thank you, Connie. But you haven't had a thing but a glass of milk. I know. You can't fry that. <laughs> <laughs> That is, I didn't feel very hungry. Oh, that's too bad. Today of all days. What's so special about today? Don't you know? Let's see. Oh, certainly. Yesterday was payday, so today must be rent day. What do I owe you, Mrs. Davis? I'm not worried about the rent, Connie, although I could use a small loan. How much? Well, five dollars would do nicely. It's for a donation I promised the ailing newsboys fund. All right, Mrs. Davis, I can let you have five dollars. You sure you won't miss it? No, I won't miss it. The people I owe the payment on my car might miss it, but I'll take care of that later. <laughs> I've had my eye on a bag in Justin's department store, and I've decided to throw caution to the winds and buy it this afternoon. The one you told me about? Green alligator skin? That's the one. Of course, I'll have to postpone a lot of my time payments. The car, my coat, the watch I bought for Mr. Boynton, but it's worth it. Wait till you see that bag, Mrs. Davis. But what about your creditors? What will you tell them? I'll write them all polite letters. Letters? What will you say? Oh, I'll think of something. I'm an English teacher, ain't I? I mean, uh... <laughs> Aren't I? Uh, am I not? <laughs> you certainly must have your heart set on that bed. Oh, I have. Do you think Mr. Boynton will like it? He likes frogs and lizards and things. <laughs> then this alligator bag ought to be right up his alley. Lucky alligator bag to be up an alley with Mr. Boynton. <laughs> Oh, that must be Walter Denton. He's giving me a lift to school. I'll be there in a minute, Walter. Is your car in the repair shop again, Connie? Yes, the garage says they just have to get one more part for the car before I can drive it again. What part is that? A motor. <laughs> Hello, Walter. Come in. Thanks, Miss Brooks. 
I just came in to tell you to be sure and bring a coat with you this morning. It's colder than a school teacher's heart out. I mean, some school teachers' hearts, Miss Brooks. You're a warm one. <laughs> Thanks, Walter. You can butter me up on the way to school. I'll go get a coat. I'll just be a few minutes. Did someone let that cat in again? It's, it's me, Mrs. Davis. Oh, Walter, I'm glad you came in. We've got to make arrangements for the surprise party. Does she know it's her birthday? No, just like last year. She's forgotten about it completely. Well, then the party will go over that much bigger. Did you find out what she wants? Yes, I did, Walter. It's a green bag in Justin's, but she's threatened to buy it for herself. Oh, that's no good. I know. So I've thought up this scheme. If we all borrow some money from her, she won't be able to buy it. <laughs> then we can give it to her for a present. I'll call the Conklins and tell them to be sure and borrow something from Miss Brooks when she gets to school. Good. She's so soft-hearted, she'll never turn anybody down, as long as there's a hard luck story with it. I'll put the bite on her and... I mean, I'll borrow something on our way to school. <laughs> oh, uh, here she comes. I'll go back into the kitchen. I don't want her to think we've been conspiring. Okay, Mrs. Davis. That wasn't such a long wait, was it, Walter? Oh, not at all, Miss Brooks. Gosh, that's a nice coat. Well, when did you buy that? Within the next 18 months. <laughs> Let's hurry, Walter. I couldn't touch a morsel of Mrs. Davis's breakfast. I'd like to get a bite on our way. Don't worry, you will. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks will continue in just a moment, but first, here is Vern Smith with an important announcement. Palm Olive Soap is giving away prizes worth $67,000, a grand prize of $25,000 in one lump sum, or $100 a month for life. And that's not all. There are over 2,000 prizes in Palm Olive's big treasure chest contest. Ford sedans, Westinghouse laundromats, from Silver Fox scarves, Toast Master toasters, and it's easy to enter. Complete the last line of this jingle. A fresher, brighter-looking skin is something I would like to win. I'll get palm olive soap today. Da 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 da. Write your last line on a plain sheet of paper or use an official entry blank giving complete rules obtainable at your dealers. Include your own and dealer's name and address and mail with the big word palm olive from the front of the wrapper of one regular and one bath size cake of palm olive soap to palm olive box 92, New York 8, New York. Now here's the jingle once more. A fresher Brighter looking skin is something I would like to win. I'll get palm olive soap today. Da 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 da. Mail your entry to Palm Olive, Box 92, New York 8, New York. Get palm olive soap for a lovelier complexion. Remember, doctors prove palm olive's beauty results. <laughs> tune-up job done in the car, Miss Brooks. Runs pretty smooth, doesn't it? Yes, it does, Walter. What kind of a car was this? Uh, is this? A 1938 Hudson. Hmm. Certainly held together for the past ten years. So have you, Miss Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm comparing you with a car or anything, but, well, you're still so youthful. Nature's treated you extremely well. Why, you haven't even got any crow's feet. Nature probably knows I can't afford shoes for them. <laughs> I don't like to keep bothering you with my personal problems, Miss Brooks, but could I once more? Could you once more what, Walter? Bother you with a personal problem. It's about a financial matter. What kind of a financial matter? A loan. Are you asking me or telling me? <laughs> I'm telling you. I mean, I'm telling you. I'm broke. Really? How long have you been a school teacher? <laughs> no, I'm serious. I've just got to get some money somewhere. It isn't like it was for myself. I wouldn't even ask if it was for myself. Who is it for? It's for a friend of mine. He's a... He's an ice man, and his horse fell down the other day, and he's laid up in the barn now, and my friend hasn't been able to sell any ice. Oh, that's too bad, Walter. He doesn't know when the horse will be on his feet again, and he's just had a baby. The horse? No, the ice man. <laughs> well, that's a switch. His wife has a baby, you see, and they haven't got enough money to buy milk to feed it. Well, let alone the other seven children in the family, plus oats. I think it's sad, Miss Brooks. Saddest thing since Camille. How much do you want to borrow, Walter? Five dollars would help a lot. Okay, here you are. Gosh, thanks. Are you sure you won't miss it? No, I won't miss it, Walter. The people who sold me this coat may miss it, but I'll take care of that later. 
Thanks again. You don't know what this money will do for these people. And you'll get it back just as soon as my friend's foot heals. Your friend's foot? I thought it was the horse who fell. The horse? Oh, sure. But didn't I tell you? When the horse fell, my friend tried to lift him up and sprained his own ankle. Oh, great. Between his sick horse, sprained ankle, and having a baby, your friend is the busiest ice man I ever knew. <laughs> well, we're right near school. Oh, gosh, I got so wound up talking about my poor friend, I forgot to stop and let you get some breakfast. Well, after that story, Walter, I'd feel guilty eating anything but hay. <laughs> I'll have an early lunch in the cafeteria. Okay, Miss Brooks. Well, here we are. Thanks, Walter. Say, isn't that Harriet Conklin going up the steps? Yeah, that's Harriet. Oh, you better hurry. She's anxious to talk to you. How can you tell from the back of her neck? <laughs> I'm psychic about some things. Go ahead, Miss Brooks. All right, Walter. See you later. Good morning, Harriet. Oh, good morning, Miss Brooks. I'm so glad we bumped into each other before school starts. I've been very anxious to talk to you. Walter is psychic at that, <laughs> among other things. What did you want to talk to me about? Well, it's rather embarrassing. Not that you're hard to talk to or anything, but... Golly, I just don't know how to say it now that we're face to face. Well, we'd look pretty silly chatting back to back. <laughs> <laughs> what seems to be the trouble? Well, it's really not my trouble, Miss Brooks. It's just that I've got to get some financial assistance for a friend in need. What friend, Harriet? Well, it's a little boy I know. He comes from a very poor family, and in order to help his folks, he shines shoes after school... Now, he's got a little dog that helped him get his business started. What did he do, put up the money? <laughs> no, Miss Brooks. He used to do tricks and track customers. But just the other day, he fell down and hurt his foot. Now, the poor little dog can't even get downtown anymore. Well, I can get him a lift downtown if he doesn't mind riding on a lame horse. <laughs> I don't understand. Well, I don't either. But how much do you want to borrow? Well, right after he was hurt, they took the little dog to a hospital, and the bill there was $8. You must have had a semi-private room. <laughs> well, here's the $8, Harriet. Oh, thank you, Miss Brooks. You sure you won't miss it? No, I won't miss it. The people I owe the payment on my watch might miss it, but I'll take care of that later. Anyway, I still have enough left to pick up that bag at Justin's this afternoon. Yeah? Oh, I mean, what bag? A green alligator job that I've had my eye on for weeks. Oh. Well, before you go to your room, Daddy would like you to stop in at his office. Uh-oh, what have I done now? Why should you think you've done something, Miss Brooks? Golly, just because Daddy's a principal is no reason for anybody to be afraid of him. No, oh, maybe you're right, Harriet. Good morning. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> morning, Daddy. See you later, Miss Brooks. Bye, Harriet. <laughs> Will you uh, step into my office a moment, Miss Brooks? Certainly, Mr. Conklin. Yeah. At ease. Uh, have a chair. Yes, sir. As you know, I was a major in the last war. Mm -hmm. Spent almost four years in charge of the post exchange at Camp Fabric, Ohio. Stout fella. <laughs> yes, although I've been returned to the arms of my loved ones for over two years now, I opened my last box of Hershey's in 46. <laughs> I must confess there are aspects of military life which bear remembering. Such as? Oh, the camaraderie, esprit de corps. Don't you agree, Miss Brooks? Oui, mon capitaine. <laughs> now, you've been teaching at Madison High for over five years, haven't you? That's right, Mr. Conklin. And in that time, I've had a lot of esprit de corps, but very few raises. I think the last one was uh, way now, back in... let's not talk shop, Miss Brooks. <laughs> I uh, realize that you haven't had a raise in some time, but after all, it's a universal complaint these days, and one which can't be remedied overnight. Meanwhile, you get by very nicely on the money you earn, don't you? Well, speaking frankly... Uh, that's the only way to speak, Miss Brooks. <laughs> now, if you don't mind, I'll come to the point. I've got to have some financial assistance for a friend of mine in distress. Another one? <laughs> this poor chap was one of my GI assistants during the war. Just a corporal, but I recommended him for a War Department citation. Really? Yes. You never saw anyone fill a Coke machine like this lad. <laughs> As for stacking Kleenex boxes... Oh! <laughs> well... <laughs> After the war, he got married and started to raise a family. That was three years ago, but luck didn't favor this boy. He lost one job after another. Things went from bad to worse. You mean he became a teacher? 
<laughs> no laughing matter, Miss Brooks. He's just written me that his wife is going to have another baby. Their fourth. In three years? <laughs> uh, there's a, a set of twins. <laughs> In any event, he's desperate. He can't even afford a hospital room for his wife. Well, I know where there's a semi-private room if she doesn't mind dogs. <laughs> I mean, how much would you like to borrow, Mr. Conklin? Well, I've asked many of my friends for five or ten dollars. I see. Well, I guess But that you're was... such an old friend, Miss Brooks, I feel that I can ask you for 15. Before our friendship gets any older, here's the $15. <laughs> well, thank you, Miss Brooks. You're sure you won't miss it? No, I won't miss it. The people I owe a repair bill on my car might miss it, but I'll take care of that later. Very well. That'll be all, then. Dismissed. <laughs> Excuse me, Miss Brooks, but may I sit at this table with you? The school cafeteria is pretty crowded today. Oh, sit down, Mr. Boynton. You'll forgive me if I go ahead with my lunch. Oh, of course. I want to eat this salad while it's still warm. <laughs> there, there's something I'd like to talk to you about. Yes, Mr. Boynton? I've heard from many people how generous and warm-hearted you are under your veneer of seeming sophistication. Of course, I've always known that you're true blue, a 100% human being deep down below the surface. Why, Mr. Boynton, you've been peeking at my x-rays. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm serious. I know that I can appeal to you for assistance without fear of embarrassment. And I know when you hear my story, you'll want to help. Et tu, Boynton? <laughs> well, what's your story? Well, I have this friend who's also a biologist. From a poor family? No, no, his family's very wealthy, as a matter of fact. But he's married and has seven children and one on the way. No, he's a single chap. But he's got a bad sickness. No, no, he's in the pink of condition. Oh, wait a minute, I know. His little puppy broke its leg. Oh, he hasn't any puppy, but his great Dane just won a blue ribbon. Wrong again. But give that lady a box of Red Heart and two tickets to next week's flea circus. <laughs> Look, Mr. Boynton, I'll bet your friend's horse is so lame he can't even ride him to work, hmm? Well, my friend drives a Cadillac. Uh, uh, look, if you'll just let me finish, I'll be as brief as possible. You see, he's leaving town, and he's got about 30 white mice and frogs that he wants to give me. Oh, so that's it. They're sick. Oh, no, not at all. They're wonderful specimens. But they're orphans. Please, Miss Brooks, what I'm trying to tell you is that... I'll need about $20 for the added equipment it'll require to house them. Oh, well, why didn't you say so? Here, Mr. Boynton, here's $18. It's all I have left. Let a couple of the mice double up. <laughs> uh, thank you, Miss Brooks. I certainly appreciate this, but are you sure you won't miss it? No, I won't miss it. The people I owe the payments on my car, watch, and coat might miss it, but I'll take care of that later. There's only one thing that's not going to be put off, Mr. Boynton. Oh, what's that? A green alligator bag I've got my deep down underneath little warm heart set on. My first stop after school will be the nearest bank that lends money. All right, all right. Attention, quiet, please. Now then, Harriet, it was your idea to have this surprise party for Miss Brooks. Suppose you outline the plan. All right, Daddy. First of all, did we all borrow enough from Miss Brooks to keep her from getting that bag she wants? Mrs. Day Davis and I took five dollars each from her. I nailed her for a... Uh, that is... <laughs> I appropriated 15. And she loaned me 18 dollars. Good for you, Mr. Boynton. Oh, I'm afraid it's not good enough, Mr. Conklin. She told me at lunch she was going to the bank and borrow the money for the bag. Oh, golly, that'll spoil everything. I know. Why don't we call the store and tell them under no circumstances to sell her that bag? Tell him uh, we're buying it. Excellent, Walter. It's a wonder that that agile mind of yours doesn't function quite so efficaciously in the schoolroom. <laughs> Gosh, thanks, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll run down to the store, pick up the bag, and take it home. Now, who'll get Miss Brooks and bring her over to our house? Oh, I will. I'll call for her at about 5 o'clock and bring her over to your house at 6. Fine. Now, synchronize watches, everybody. <laughs> Let's see, confidential loan department. This is it. 
Uh, pardon me, I've read your ads, but I'd still like to be assured that any business we transact will be strictly confidential. You may be quite certain of that, miss. <laughs> what? I said we treat all our transactions with the utmost secrecy. Well, you can let me in on it. <laughs> I'd like to borrow about $35. Yes, ma'am. What is your occupation, please? I'm a school teacher. How long have you been teaching, and at what school, please? Five years at Madison High. <laughs> and how do you sound when you've got laryngitis? Very comical. <laughs> you write your name and address down, and I'll get you the money. Is that all there is to it? Yes, we don't believe in a lot of red tape. Oh. All you have to do is sign a few papers. First here. Yes. Now here. Right. Now this one. There you are. Now here. Mm-hmm. And here. Again. And this one. Yes. Now we'll start on the second page. <laughs> here. Yes. And here. Mm-hmm. And here. Mm-hmm. And here. And here. And here. Can I help you, madam? It's Miss, Miss Brooks. I'd like to see an item your department has been featuring in your window display. Uh, what item is that, Miss Brooks? It's a green alligator. What? A green <laughs> alligator. I've seen it in your window every day for weeks now. Have you ever heard of Alcoholics Anonymous? <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean to tell me you don't know what I'm talking about? Oh, not at all, Miss Brooks. You know you don't know what you're talking about, don't you? <laughs> or do you? <laughs> of course I do. Let's start all over again. There's a purse made of green alligator skin that's been in your window for oh, the past... Oh, that thing. Oh, you wouldn't want to own that. Why, it wouldn't do a thing for you. It wouldn't have to. I've got a job. <laughs> May I see it, please? Uh, 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 funny thing about that model, I sold the last one not a half hour ago to, uh, uh, Miss H. Conklin, I believe. Well, couldn't you get one just like it if I... H. Conklin? That's Harriet. Why, that little demon. Maybe if I get her another bag, she'll trade me the green one. No, she wears a lot of green. Besides, she has alligator shoes, too. Well, I might as well go over to her house and see what I can do anyway. Um, uh, I didn't mean to eavesdrop on your monologue. But, uh, H. Conklin won't be home for a while. She said she had a lot of shopping to do. And then she's going to get a manicure at Antoine's. Well, I'll go to her house and wait. Thank you, and good day, J. Edgar Hoover. <laughs> Mrs. Conklin, is Harriet at home? Why, no, Miss Brooks. She's out doing some last-minute shopping for the... Miss Brooks! Isn't it terribly early? I mean, um, with the days getting shorter all the time, it seems like about five o'clock. It is five o'clock. May I come in, Mrs. Conklin? Oh, of course. Who's that at the door, Martha? Oh, it's you, Miss Brooks. Hello, Mr. Conklin. Martha, did Harriet get back with all... Miss Brooks! (laughs) (laughs) Isn't it a little early? I mean, it only seems like five o'clock. Five one... (laughs) <laughs> sit down here in the living room a minute, Miss Brooks Osgood, I'd like to talk to you Yes, yes Will you excuse us, please, Miss Brooks? Surely What happened? Why did you so early? Well, I don't know what it was what Somebody must have slipped up That's all I've got to say <laughs> I wonder if they've had a confidential loan lately <laughs> Walter. Hello, Mrs. Conklin. I got all this stuff. Funny hats, noisemakers, confetti, and streamers. Oh, come on in the living room and we'll start decorating the place. Uh, but, Walter, uh, look who's here, Walter. Hi, Miss Brooks. Hi, Walter. Now, we'll take the streamers and we'll start in this corner of the room and we'll... <laughs> Miss Brooks! <laughs> when you hear the tone, the time will be 5-2. <laughs> this one's on me. <laughs> Oh, hello, Mr. Conklin. I, I was just over to Mrs. Davis's house, but you... Say no uh, more. Say no more, Boynton. Come into the living room. Hello, Mr. Boynton. Hi. Oh, hello, Mrs. Conklin. Walter. Hello, Mr. Boynton. Oh, hello, Miss, Miss Brooks. As I started to say, Mr. Conklin, I went over to Mrs. Davis's to pick up Miss Brooks, but she... Miss Brooks! <laughs> I know I'm terribly early, but I wish I knew for what. <laughs> I'll answer it. Must be Harriet. 
Hello, dear. Mrs. Davis. Come in, won't you? I got the bag, Mother, and I had it gift-wrapped. Oh, it looks just super. I brought the cake, Martha. Well, hello, everybody. Hello, Mrs. Davis, Harriet. Hello, hello Miss Brooks. Brooks. Well, there's nothing else we can do now but wait. Miss, Miss Brooks! Brooks! <laughs> if somebody says Miss Brooks once more, I'm going to change my name to Lucy Pumpernickel. <laughs> Well, I guess the cat's out of the bag now. We might as well tell her. Miss Brooks, this little gathering is in honor of your birthday. My birthday? How do you like that? I forgot it again. Miss Brooks, as a token of our esteem and affection, may we present you with this little gift. Go on, Miss Brooks, open it. The gift is something you've wanted for a long time, Connie. Oh, the green alligator bag. So that's why everybody borrowed money from me today. Well, that's right. We, we didn't want you to get it for yourself. Well, this is certainly the nicest present anybody ever bought me, with or without my money. <laughs> well, we didn't get this with your money, Miss Brooks. Look inside the purse. Why? Oh, what's this? Five, ten, twenty? It's all here. That's right, Miss Brooks. Well, now that we all know it's your birthday, suppose you tell us how old you are. <laughs> Happy birthday to me, happy birthday to me, happy birthday, our Miss Brooks, happy birthday to you. Eve Arden, as our Miss Brooks returns in just one moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight, you can see this come true, revealed by a luster cream shampoo. You'll see your hair lovelier, your wave or curls softer, more glamorous, easy to do quickly. Even in hardest water, luster cream shampoo leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, easier to manage, brilliant with sheen. Don't wait. Tonight, use Luster Cream Shampoo. Not a soap, not a liquid, but a dainty, magical cream. Discover why it's by far the top favorite cream shampoo. Get the big jar, one dollar. Smaller sizes, either tubes or jars. Tonight, you can be a... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful Luster Cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to... Luster Cream Shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. So, you see, I won't need the $35 I borrowed from you people yesterday. Here it is. Fine. The interest is practically nothing. Oh, that's nice. May I have a receipt, please? Of course. Just sign here. Yes. And 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 here. Yes. Let's go straight into another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Tom Olive Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous dream girl hair. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written and directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Dentists know what cleans teeth best, and over 4,000 dentists say Colgate Tooth Powder with a two-minute routine gets teeth sparkling and super clean. So to remove dull film and get your teeth shining clean, just brush teeth two minutes, morning and night, with Colgate Tooth Powder. Brush inside, outside, and biting surfaces. Always brush away from the gums. See how quickly this gets teeth naturally bright. It removes dull film that improper brushing misses. And Colgate Tooth Powder also sweetens your breath. Try it. Buy Colgate Tooth Powder today. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North. Tune in Tuesday evenings over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking for CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>